Okay, your second question was how often has the flight and to monitor the systems in flight? And um, actually, continuously, it depends on the phase of flight, of course, on takeoff. We're looking, all the eyes of the flight engineers and of the first officers are with the engines, because they are the most um, important um, instruments to be, to be monitored during a takeoff, during a critical phase of flight. And then later on, he's helping and supporting things like flap retraction, uh, selection of climb thrust, selection of cruise thrust and these things. He had um, this huge overhead panel, this uh, huge sidewall panel. And uh, as you can see, lots of indicators because there was no ICAS in these days. There was no messages. And uh, he had his, his, his flow pattern to watch it and to go through it also during flight. He was, for example, he had his own flight log and where he was monitoring systems and where he was recording the behavior of systems during flight. Like if, if one engine had a little bit uh, too low high, uh, uh, oil pressure, that was monitored. And also the oil pressure levels and the oil levels and so and so, that was all written down. Or if any pack was a bit overheated, he could do something, he could relieve the pack and so make a reset, let the temperature cool down, maybe select a different cabin temperature or pressurization level and then bring the pack back on um, on service and see what if there is a difference. Yeah. There were many little, I would say, in-flight repairs to be done by the flight engineer, um, of which the pilots had no clue what was going on. Because we were busy flying the airplane, at, when talking as a pilot. Um, you, you're so busy with this dinosaur style of, um, of uh, auto flight system yeah, and uh, navigation system. Yeah. Uh, so you, you didn't have an eye or, or any capacity to, to watch other things than um, like systems, you know. Sometimes you saw master cautions and the flight engineer said, I'm taking care of it. Okay, it's done. So he did some repair. There was something, there was something set or reset that we had no clue about it. And then after the flight, we read in the, in the records, okay, we had a low oil pressure. Okay. It was obviously... It was uh, it was sorted by the flight engineer. He had, he, he sorted a lot of things, and um, that's why he was so helpful. And he was a good supervisor to the to the pilots. If one of the pilots had set the wrong Q and H in these old the airplanes, there was no warning like Q and H is agree. It was all mechanical. So what if you set the wrong Q and H? Probably at the wrong altitude, you're you're reaching your minimum, especially at at low visibility approaches. That was something critical. Yeah. And he was telling the first officer, maybe just the heading buck. And he was telling the captain, maybe just to level off. And so, you know, little flying mistakes that we did, little lapses because we were, our, our attention was taken away by something else and we forgot something to do, to set up. Um, he was he was seeing, he was like a, a continuous supervisor and it was very good to have a flight engineer. Also, if somebody missed a radio call or if a radio call wasn't clear, I heard flight level 390, did you say 370? No, no, I answered 370. So we could compare each other. Um, these things, you know, it was it was really good. He was doing the communication to the, to the, to the company when there was something wrong and the company had to decide whether to come back or whether to continue to destination or uh, he also did the um, in-flight diversion communication. It was really good to have a flight engineer. Okay.